Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update on the Lawrence Plays channel. And yesterday we talked all about spaceships and so today I'm going to try not to talk about them at all because I don't want to uh, I don't want to bore you. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, talking about one thing absolutely constantly. However, we've now over here on Norvis, we've been working on our intermediaries. And the intermediaries are what we've decided, what we've started calling the sort of the, the different, various different forms that all the exotic materials can take. So the, the beryllium one is, of course, the one I'm most familiar with because I've been working with it. And so here you can see we're bringing in the beryllium ingots, we're turning them into beryllium plates and turn them into beryllium rods with by sticking an iron rod in the middle, and then into uh, beryllium scaff, beryllium aeroframe scaffolds, and then into these aeroframe bulkheads. So we're going through all the various different steps of it, and there's, there's, there's all, all the different steps as they, those you can see. And you've seen this design before already a little bit, but what's new? is that we've now got a supply of the low density structures coming in here that are being passed down and into the, into the system and that means we've now made lots and lots of all of this to the point where the station up here is now well it's as full as it's going to get of the beryllium scaffolds and up here it's as full as this one's going to get of the aeroframe bulkheads so things are going really well with the uh, beryllium processing and, and the beryllium side side products should we say but one of the things I didn't like about this system is that I'm bringing in these uh, the low density structures here and they're not make it being made in the sort of numbers that we'd need which is why we had to wait so long for these to actually turn up but oh and I've kidnapped the train I need to fix that in the next uh, stream sorry about that everyone um, but so what I've done over here well yes we're using these for the time being in order to make the uh, the bulkheads but for the future we've got this system across here and this should be capable of making about half a belt I think of low density structures all by itself and there's only what there's about seven machines in there I think and that's making them out of the, with the new advanced recipe where you, you bring in your aeroframe scaffold you bring in plastic bar glass and steel and that makes the low density structures like this and it's different from the other one which you can see here because it uses a lot less of the ingredients so whilst it does use the beryllium uh, aeroframe scaffolds which are quite expensive to make it only uses half of one of those and it saves you something like nine plastic bar okay you have to use some glass but that's just made from stone so that's cheap it saves you uh, one steel and ten copper for each each low density structure you make so they're much much cheaper and in total equipped quantity of resources the only problem is that you need to then bring in some slightly more exotic resources to make them like the beryllium and the imosite um, and so it's yeah it, it is good I think it's going to be much much better but we'll, we'll sort of wait and see the reason it's not actually kicked in yet is because we haven't got these superior long filter inserters, and these are really these are amazing. They're really really fast, um, but they're also they're also rather expensive. And unfortunately, if we look all the way over here where they're supposedly being made, um, here in fact, well, we've turned off the supply of them at the moment because I desperately needed some um, purple underground belts, or at least I thought I did. I've, I think I since cancelled them and turned them into green ones, um, but they're not being made at the moment, so we're very very short of them because they come from these iridium bearings, which come from the iridium girders which come from iridium plates which come from iridium ingots which we don't have any of because um, Mike has had some supply problems and we'll touch on that a bit more in the, uh, in the late, later parts of the video but at the moment suffice to say we don't have any um, iridium over here and so the whole system has failed. Eventually hopefully we'll have some we'll have some of these at uh, these inserters well, actually we won't have any of these inserters that needs to be put back like that then eventually maybe we will have some but in the time for the time being it might be better to just come in and put in some temporary slow long inserters along here like this and see and see whether the machine is capable of keeping up just with with, with three of these in there. Um, I suspect it won't be, but at least we'll have a bit of a supply of the uh, low density structures coming through. And then once that's working, we can turn this belt round and ha or have the splitter in a slightly different position and have the low density structures going up here and down here. So it'll be brought down here to be made into the in, into the aeroframe bulkheads, but also taken up here to be put into the station. And this can then be a pickup station instead of a drop off station. And we'll have hopefully then another supply of the um, of, of the low density structures and ideally we'll make this a lot bigger we'll have many many rows of this enabling us to make the low density structures far more quickly and more cheaply than we are currently and that will save us as I said fantastic quantities of copper and uh, and plastic so things will be much much better hopefully when we can get to that stage the only problem is we need to make sure that this um, this imosite uh, supply is up and running at a sufficient speed now right now we have 17,000 of it which is loads um, and so that's going really well but that's because this whole system down here has, has gone to sleep because we filled up the buffers. So once we start actually demanding it, yeah, who knows? We shall see. Nearby, Mike has started doing basically the same thing, but with the iridium in intermediate. So this is going to be very, very slow for the time being because we don't have any iridium. But in the long run, when once he's got this spaceship up and running and he's he's producing it in large enough quantities because he's got enough vulcanite from me, then he'll be bringing this over here by the train load. We can chuck it in here, and then we can start making. Well, he's got loads of machines here for making the um, iridium plate. 
and then that can all be passed up here to make the iridium girders, and then to make the iridium... Are these iridium bulkheads? I don't know what they're called. Let's have a look. No, not the you. Heavy composites, apparently. And then I think there's a couple more things after that as well that he might, may, may not have thought of. Uh, the heavy assemblies and possibly something else. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. So he's not, he's, not, he's not included the heavy bearings, which we definitely need to make. And he hasn't included the heavy assemblies, which I think we're probably going to need to make. So, yeah, there's a couple more stages in here as well. But to be honest, I'm going to, I'm going to as, as always, I'm going to call this a work in progress. I'm going to say he's not finished it yet. So it's absolutely fine that it's a bit short of stuff. It's going to be continued. But this is a really nice place to do all these sort of things. So the theory is that we'll have... All of these being done over here, then we'll have the, the Iridium ones being done here, we can have the Holmium ones being done down here, and then maybe things like making the uh, space elevator cable can be done in here, and maybe a few more things like that. The other equivalent is the Vitamelange, and those that requires the, the earlier stages in such ridiculous quantities. I don't think it's worth bringing them over here in the as the uh, as the first step, and then building them up to the later ones. We might as well do all of that out on Big Grid, and then ship them over as the finished products. I think that's going to make a lot more sense. And that's what we're working towards. So the fourth quadrant down here can be used for the sort of the the other things that require lots of these these things, like as I say, the space elevator cable, because we do want to start making that in massive quantities, so we can uh, so we can ship it. We can make it down here with productivity modules where it'll be much much cheaper, and then ship it up the elevator and send it off to absolutely everywhere that requires it. Tristan has helped out a bit with this by setting up all of the trains along here. I think I talked about these last week. I'm not certain, but as you can see along here, we have a beryllium train, we have a holmium train, we have an iridium train. Uh, we apparently have a mineral water train, but that's going in the opposite direction. Uh, we have vulcanite, and then eventually, I, I put the vulcanite one in, and then eventually Tristan will be putting in a cryonite one here as well, so we've got the full set. But, you know, it, it, baby steps. Loosely on the subject of resources, well, I did mention that we're getting through crazy amounts of plastic making all the low-density structures with the old recipe. So Tristan has put in some additional oil fields up here. There's one. There's one. Uh, we're getting a load of oil out here. It's 4.2 million. That's a good, healthy oil field. There's another one up here of 7 million. So maybe we'll tap that one once this one runs out. And... Uh, and another 7 million up here. So I think we've got a decent amount of oil around on this planet. Maybe we don't need to go to the oily moon just yet. But it's... It, yeah, there's lots of it. It just requires a bit more transporting on this planet. He's also added in some additional oil trains because that was also apparently a, a bottleneck for this system. But, and as I say, so the reason he was doing that was we noticed there was a shortage of plastic, and I think there was a shortage of coal beforehand. Um, however, it has now been noted that actually the, the plastic shortage was due to a shortage of coal, which also seems to have been fixed, and nobody's, nobody's admitted to doing that. So whether whether they, they fixed it and it just and it just is now... Or, or whether we just sort of got a bit more caught up and now things are okay, I'm not sure. But we did have a shortage of coal previously. We've now got 14,000 of it in here. I think that's going to be okay for a while. But when this system is running flat out, it's amazing. You can see you can see a solid belt of coal pouring in over here and then a solid belt of plastic coming out as well. It's, it, it, it is very impressive. I see we actually have a little trickle of, um, of plastic coming out here. And yeah, you can see a little, little bit of coal being added in by the inserters over here just as, as, as it's needed. So... That must be, ah oh yes, that's because we're pulling a little bit of it down here, down this belt, and we're sending it out by delivery cannon, which is a much uh, slower process than the way we pour it out when, it, when, when a train bit turn, uh, turns up to pick some up. So yeah, we have a trickle at the moment, sometimes it goes out as a pour. Thinking of plastic and supplies and so on, over here in the putting things into the trains to take up into space area, uh, that's a catchy name, Leonard of Quirm, I apparently am. Uh, we have various different belts feeding, feeding all these resources in here. Tristan's added some extra ones in, so he's put in plastic, steel, rare metals and glass have all been added in here. Plus, plastic, steel, rare metal, glass. Okay, so before we just had uh, ice and sulphur. Um, so he's put all of these in as well, and some extra space as well for additional supplies. And these are all being piped into the train here, which goes up into Norbit. And then this is the one that unloads here to give all of these all of these different resources uh, to the to the to the system over here, so that they can then be brought along anywhere that needs cry well cry, not cryonite is a bad example, but anywhere that needs plastic, it can be passed along the belt along here and then fed into the appropriate spaceship to be taken away to Njord in this case or where, wherever it's needed. And and so th this is the how we're going to do all of the uh, all of the Norvian resources. And yeah, the, the as I say, the the sulphur is a little bit of a worry for me. The, the the rate we seem to get through it. We'll find out how Talos gets on once we get the uh, cryonite up and running a bit better. But in the meantime, we shall see. How, we shall just have to see how things go. He's also added in an additional thing to the downstream train, so that's all the ones that stop in on these sort of stops, and we'll take miscellaneous stuff that has been brought over from the other planets. And now back down on Norvis, these eventually make it to here, and they've now been trained to deal with pyroflux barrels, uh, except they haven't. So there's a, there's a bit of belt missing, but the theory is they'll be brought round, presumably round here, and then up this belt, 
through here. And yes, there's an unbarreling machine here, which will take the um, take the pyroflux out, put it into the tanks over here, so it can be taken away by train to to where it's needed, and then do something with the barrels. Apparently, apparently, it just feeds all the barrels out and puts them into this station here, which is called oh steel plate pickup. So presumably, there's going to be a pulverizer in here at somewhere at some point that's going to turn the barrels into into steel plates, but. That's not actually doing anything yet. Eventually, though, it'll be a way of getting rid of the barrels. My only concern with this is I'm not sure if we're really using steel plates anywhere. If there, that is, if there are any stations that are actually requesting steel plates. Because I think pretty much everywhere, we're now requesting steel ingots and then turning them into plate on site. Because that's much more logistically efficient. So... Yeah, I don't know if we're going to actually be, doing, be able to take that stuff away. But um, I'm sure Tristan has a plan. Out in the wild and purple wildernesses of um, of, of uh, Njord, jeez, Tristan has been expanding his um, his coverage of the planet with the intent to take out, out on every single core seam on the planet. Now there's a couple over here still he hasn't got, but and another one here. But he's he is getting there at quite an alarming rate. That's that's quite the rail network, especially given how just how swampy this planet is, and the fact that he does all of his building by construction bot. I'm I'm kind of impressed. So the next thing to look at, I suppose, is how how he's getting on resource wise. So he's got he's got trains rattling around. He's dropping off. I, I think these core fragments? No, this looks like ore. So he's feeding the ore in down here. The core fragments are coming in. They're being quickly um, nommed down into uh, in, in, into into ore, which is all then being passed up here. We're prioritising that, bringing it down here. Lovely. And then uh, we've got a good. Looks like a good, healthy supply of the powder coming through here. It looks like actually now all his machines have got at least. Ah, I see. They've all got some powder being fed, fed into them. But the, the sh problem. Now, to guess, I would say is probably these beads that are being fed through. Although they, there's quite a lot of them coming through, and he's got another belt of them being joined in down here. So it seems fairly complete. But these machines aren't running. Why? Why are they not running? Let's have a look. Um, they, are, they, they haven't got enough hydrogen chloride. Okay, so there's still further expansion needed. But this, the system is, is getting. I think he's. It feels like he's solving one shortage at a time. And I suspect once he solves the hydrogen chloride shortage, he's going to then find he's got a cryonite shortage or possibly a, uh, a holminite shortage. We shall, we shall see. But then he's got lots of the, uh, the powder coming around here, being fed into the. Um, are these centrifuges. These are, these are indeed centrifuges, and then being fed off to be made into the ingots. But as I touched on in yesterday's video, the ingots are then being passed all the way around, round, 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 round here, and I think, yes, they are all then disappearing into delivery cannons rather than being passed off into the spaceship. So, partial success. Although that said, the spaceship isn't even up and running yet, so it's going to be a little while until he's um, uh, until, until he absolutely need, needs the, needs the full flow of it. So I guess this is a one one thing at a time. If he gets the spaceship up and running, that'll get rid of all of the all of the byproducts he's got being generated, and he can then, <clears throat> well, maybe maybe then his spaceship can bring in a lot more sand or a lot more stone to be turned into sand. Uh, we shall have to see, but all that can then be fed in here. We can make more hydrogen chloride, but it looks like, to be honest, this is already running absolutely flat out from a from a blue belt's worth. Um, which is all being sent over by delivery cannon. Although that said, oh, it's not actually being sent over by delivery cannon. It's coming from... Okay, so there's a load of stone coming in here that's being pulverised and turned into the sand. And that seems to be most of what he's, most of what he's got here. And there's a bit of... Yeah, it's all, all a bit chaotic, if I'm being honest. Um, <laughs> but something's needed in various different places. So yeah, Tristan's going to need to start bringing stone in. And that's going to be an interesting one, I suspect. Um, because all these deliveries of sand that keep falling out of the sky are going to stop. Once we eventually move all of the uh, all of the other outposts over to the spaceship system. That said, that said, maybe we could have some sort of system up in uh, in in orbit where it pulls out some of the stone that's coming in on the spaceships and then delivers it straight over to Tristan. That wouldn't be impossible. That might, and in fact, that might be a lot better than having trains taking it up and down the elevator endlessly. So maybe we'll go for that. Um, put that down on the on the random ideas Lawrence has had while he's talking about things and see if anyone bites. Over on Snowdrop, it's a similar story. Uh, with, with, this is because Tristan is basically doing the two things in parallel. He's got—I think I touched on this yesterday, actually. He's got the uh, the byproducts being taken out, taken away by uh, by the train, and he's not got enough cryonite getting through to uh, in order to uh, put any of that into the train. I did miss out, however, that he is uh, now putting pyroflux into barrels and shipping them off to orbit. So that'll be up here somewhere. Yes, pyroflux is going into barrels over here, which, much in the same way as I was doing on Agnea, is be are being made from the uh, from the iron, from the steel which comes from the iron ore that comes from the core processing, which is a nice balance because the pyroflux all comes from the core processing. So therefore, that means you get if the, the, 
when it's when it runs faster, you get more iron. Therefore, you get more steel. Therefore, you get more barrels. Therefore, you can get rid of the pyroflux. But if it's not running, then the problem is sort of the opposite thing. You don't you don't have any you don't have any barrels, but you also don't have any pyroflux to put into them. But when that when when he does generate some, it can be put into a barrel like this, and then that'll bimble off down here and be put into the into the, into the train to go up to the spaceship. Over in the Kotharian area, well, Mike is doing things, having to do things a little bit differently. Because making Iridium requires large quantities of mineral water. So his spaceship, instead of having three warehouses in it, has two warehouses and a fluid tank. And there we go, he's pulling, the, pulling it out there. But got, got the, um, the mineral water will be being brought out eventually, brought over to here, put into a train. He's got less than a train's load over here. But when the system is working, that can come down here and be dropped off into the tank here and then made available for, for, the, for the other trains to take away. So presumably, well, look, looking at this, I, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so he's got three different inputs along here. He's got the um, artillery, he's got the space de meteor defense ammunition being taken out to a, to a station. That's um, somewhat horrifying. And then vulcanite, uh, enriched vulcanite, uh, also being also coming out over here and be ready, ready to be essentially ready to be taken away and put into the um, into the facilities, uh, in, in, into the trains and taken away to use where it's needed. Now I do have a large quantity of vulcanite available in in orbit, but I don't think Mike has been using it, and that is why yeah, I said earlier we've run out of iridium because well there's no irid there's a, a, a very small trickle of iridium being made that is appears to be being put into the station by priority instead of into the delivery cannons, um, and it's it, it's a bit limited. Oh no. I take it back. There is actually plenty of um, plenty of, part of uh, vulcanite over here. There's plenty of enriched vulcanite. Maybe it's actually. I take it all back. The system is running flat out. It's just that the uh, the rate it's producing at is is relatively low, and it's all going into these into these um, stations in order to be taken away to the uh, to the elevator and up to up to orbit. So it's not so much that there isn't any iridium available. It's that it's being all being taken away and, and to be put into the trains for the, for the new more new more modern system. Um, and there's a bit of an irony here because um, Mike was complaining endlessly in the last stream or two that he wasn't getting any vulcanite through, basically because I'd done because I'd been prior because I'd been filling up the uh, the spaceship in order to send that off and had pulled off some of the production, admittedly. So there was less of it being produced than there was before. Um, and now Mike has done exactly the same over here. So um, it's a little bit hypocritical, but never mind. The big question for Mike is going to be whether he can bring in enough mineral water in that one big tank in order to make an entire two warehouses worth of stuff. That's going to be partly iridium, and it's going to be partly all of the byproducts that he doesn't seem to be uh, ditching out in quite the same way yet. Um, but eventually, yeah, he's going to need to get rid of all of that somehow, somewhere. Where's this going? Uh, it's all being fed into a stone. There's lots of stuff being fed into a stone system down here. These metals are being brought over here, and I don't know if I'm just following belts endlessly. Where does this belt go? Okay, he's got an iron iron mine over here as well. So, yeah, he's got a cer certain amounts of these metals around, and I, d I don't know what he's going to do with them. I assume he's going to put them into a spaceship at some point, but this is Mike. Who knows? He says he's done a more serious update to the ni to the nitric acid production, which is here by putting in a wide area beacon. But we saw that wide area beacon last week, so I think he's just claiming claiming things multiple times and uh, waiting to see if I notice and, and whether I call him out on it. He also says he's improved the meteor defense system, which I first took to mean he's moved it to Kothar orbit, but no, it turns out no, it's just down here, and it's now being fed by those trains that we were looking at earlier. So yeah, there's lots and lots of uh, meteor defense ammo being passed through here. It's a slightly odd system. I think he's probably got an ex I think he's got an excessive amount of buffer going on here because he's got one, two, three, four uh, chests along here, plus the train. Plus whatever ends up down here in this in these warehouses waiting to be and, and these this warehouse waiting to go into the train and then whatever's going to be in orbit. So I think a lot of this needs to be sort of patched together so that he doesn't end up taking over all of the meteor defense ammunition production for the next million years, uh, just pulling it all out here and adding it to um, and filling up warehouse after warehouse with it. Um, I do notice that none of this seems to be cabled together, so he obviously hasn't set up his uh, requests and his inputs yet. So maybe it's probably okay for now, but in the long run, this m might cause problems. But I'm sure he's going to. I'm sure he's going to get that set up properly. And he says that means he's now finished Kothar for now. So that presumably means he's happy with the uh, the rate the mineral water is being brought in at, and and, and that the iridium ingots are being produced. Uh, we've got fra t tiny fractions and non fractions of a train over there. Up in orbit, there is uh, there's 10,000. Oh, the, this spaceship is now completely full, so it is ready to depart. So some fixing is going to need to be done here because the ship should have gone. Uh, oh yes, it's because there's a there's two mineral water left in here, and it's probably set to not depart until there's zero mineral water. So we need to be a little bit less picky about that because get, trying to get all the fluid out scraped out of the bottom of one of these huge tanks, that's always difficult. He's not we're not going to be able to get every every last drop of it out. So this needs to depart when when it's less than I don't know a thousand would probably be, be okay. Uh, the pump's not 
not too too far away, but apparently it's far enough away that we can't get the last two out of there. Back home on Norvis, Mark has been continuing to push the borders back, so we've now got a nice solid wall going around here um, after this the gappy one I showed you yesterday. So he's claimed all of this area. I don't know what he's planning to do with it. Maybe he just has some sort of compulsion to go out and spread his walls, grow his grow his land, all that sort of thing. I don't know, but he seems to be. He, he, but he's got us a nice big area, and he has at least kept it convex. I don't see any dodgy places where a bot might fly from f fly from one place to to, to another and get shot down. Um, even over here, there's a little there's a little bit of possible dodginess over there, but I think that's probably that's very much an edge case and probably won't happen. And also, he's been working on the southwest, not the southeast, so I probably can't blame him for that. I don't know. I probably could blame him anyway. Uh, maybe we just need a wall across there, and then it would, then, it would, then it would be fine. He's also ended up having to boost meteor defense ammunition production here, um, because uh, because Mike stopped stolen huge amounts of it. No, no, because we're getting through a lot more of it now. That we're, now that we're starting to ship it out by um, by by spaceship, we're taking it out to places uh, in, 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 in already made. Whereas before we we're sending out the ingredients by delivery cannon and making it on site. Now we're taking out the fully assembled um, ammunition, and it needs so we need to. We need to have a better supply of it. Now, at the moment, we are taking it away by bot, which is kind of disgusting. Uh, it's being brought from there, presumably over to... Okay, it's all being brought over to here. Where... It's being stockpiled in this warehouse, because there's no... Oh, no, they don't take it back. There's an, out, there's an out here. So that's bringing it out down here, and passing it down all the way down here, to be loaded into... Yeah, okay, into this, this spaceship train. So that's... That's a fairly horrible system. I don't. I don't like that. I think we need a train to bring the uh, meteor defense ammunition around. Uh, this, if we're going to be, if we're going to be transporting it around it like like this. So um, yeah, let's let let's not do things like that. That's that's horrible. And on that rather um, unfortunate note, sorry about that. Well, we've uh, we've basically finished the. Uh, we've finished going through the uh, all, all the things we've been up to. So now we're going to have a quick look at researches, and not much has happened in the last uh, last recently in, in the last stream because we've been doing big researches. So we managed to get energy weapon damage eight finished, and we're now working on energy weapon damage nine. And apparently that's absolutely everything we've done. But as you can see, this one t does take eighty one hundred um, science packs of quite a lot of them, including energy threes. So it's not it's not too surprising. It's taking it's taking a while to get that done and finished. Um, but that said, when we get that done, it will give us more damage for all of our lasers. That's the ones all the way around the outside edge of the base, and all the ones we've got in our pockets is. So that's very, very, very worth having. Let's have a quick check on in um, in, in Norbit to see how the uh, how the research is going up here, and whether we're whether whether supply is keeping up, and whether this is just the rate we research at, or whether there's an actual problem. No, it looks like we, we do have all three of the um, all three of the the, the uh, energy science packs along here. Everything seems to be full. We're, we're researching away quite merrily. All right, so it's just that it's just because it's eight thousand uh, science packs to 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 research the thing, and, and we've only got these two uh, two labs over here that are churning away at it. And so that brings us to the end of the episode. As I was saying yesterday, please be aware that from the beginning of September, I'm going to be shuffling the calendar around a bit. So we're going to have streams and things will be on different days of the week. We're going to be doing the Factorio streams on on Thursday evenings and the XCOM streams on Tuesday evenings. The other videos will be shuffled around a bit to, to fit around that. I'll let you know a bit more about that once I've decided exactly when everything is going to, going to fit in. But it, it, we'll still have all of the same content on the channel, so there'll be lots of things to see. And so that means, but for now, you can still come back on, on Monday for the, uh, for, the, for the next Factorio stream. You can come back on Wednesday for the XCOM stream. And please send over a soldier if you haven't already. There's instructions on that all over the place. Or come onto the Discord and ask there if you're, if you're confused. Um, and come back for all the other videos as well, of course. There's some extra XCOM videos coming out now because I'm having so much fun playing XCOM, I don't want to only do it during streams. Um, and of course, there'll always be more stuff on the channel to watch. So, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, whatever, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.